What's up, everyone? Today, let's do anchoring. Rockport anchor. What? So there's a lot of types of anchor out there. The most common type nowadays on merchant navy ships, especially large ships, are the stockless type. And that's mainly because the design is flat and can be stored away easily. Usually you'll see it tucked away just beneath the bow. This one here is our spare anchor. A stockless type will have its crown, the arms, the flukes in one piece. It's designed to pivot on a shank. The shank is a term for the centerpiece. Contrary to what many believe, the anchor actually don't hold the ship. The anchor only digs in the seabed and holds the chain. It's the length and the weight of the chain that holds the ship. It's all about horizontal force. Later, I'll show you guys how it works. Now, at the fourth station, we've got two anchors. One on each side, which can be lowered or heave up, controlled by the windlass. The anchor chain leads up to the hose pipe, through the windlass, down the spurling pipe into the chain locker where it is stored. Here is a chain locker. Normally it's kept closed, but today I was following the chief mate for a visual inspection. The big drum is called a gypsy. Some items of interest here are the guillotine bar, also known as a bow stopper or paw bar. Traps in the holds the chain in place in case the brake fails. The wires attached are the lashings, holding it in place when not in use. By putting a dock clutch into gear, we can either heave up or lower the anchor. Windless is the term for the whole system used to heave up our lower anchor and mooring lines. The anchor alone is about 9,000 kilograms or 20,000 pounds, plus the chain, that's quite heavy. Which is why using the windlass is still a slow process. Heaving up the anchor is always going to be slow, but for lowering the anchor, there's actually another way, a faster way, which is to let the anchor fly out. What that means is having the anchor chain disengage from the dock clutch and brakes, then lower by gravity. The only way to stop it though is by engaging the brakes. Here is what it looks like. As you can see, it's quite violent. Lots of vibrations, debris flying everywhere, and a lot more risky than just by motors. If you aren't careful, this might happen. If we still have the anchor, well, brakes on tight, bar down and pin in, securing the anchor.
So how do the anchor anchor chains hold the ship in place? Well, remember the keyword is horizontal force. Casey nice that time. Let me show you from the beginning. The ship should always be downwind or down current, whichever is stronger, slightly drifting backward so that when an anchor is lowered into the water, the crown catches and set onto the seabed, with the engine or the current walking the ship back to pay out the chains. A useful trick to figure out the current or tidal direction is simply just look at nearby anchor ships. All anchored ships will follow the heading of the current. A horizontal pull gives the anchor its holding power digging into the seabed. The weight of the chain, this curved section also known as the catenary, holds the ship. So the more chain laid, the greater the holding power. A general rule of thumb is 1 to 5 ratio for good weather, 1 to 7 or more for bad weather. It varies between ship sizes and type. For deck officers, an anchor circle should be drawn with the radius being the length of the cable plus from bow to radar antenna so that you can monitor the ship on radar and act this. Well, we drop our anchor plus how many cables we laid out plus the ship's length. See this is the anchor circle on the outside and this is our track pass position and swings back and forth because the tidal wave is semi durable Don't forget to show the anchor ball and signal. Anchor light. During anchor watches, the crew have to check the weather and sea conditions. Security, 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 all stations, all stations, all stations. This is United States Coast Guard, Central Charleston, South Carolina. The Coast Guard received a report to use coffee. As well as the status of the chain. We want to avoid dragging anchor and drift somewhere or drift into another ship. That would be bad. The crew will look for the chain physically and report back. The terms we use are up and down, short stay, medium stay, or long stay. Long stay means there's a high chance of dragging anchor because it's being pulled like this. To heave up, just walk the ship over to the anchor, pull up with the windlass because remember it's not designed to hold vertical forces. How do you count anchor chain? Well, in the old days, every length of cable is marked between the shackles. One shackle is about 27.5 meters. Nowadays, modern ships, we have gauges that show how many chains are laid. If you've got any questions about anchoring, make sure to comment down below and join the discussion. Smash that subscribe button and hit me up on Instagram. See you next time.